So the ATF is now seeking immediate emergency Supreme Court review in the case which challenges their frames and receivers rule. So let's talk about this. But real quick before I jump into this video, if you think the ATF's rules like their pistol brace rule, their frames and receivers rule, and all these rules they're putting in place are clearly unconstitutional, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Also want to mention that we now have a podcast available. You can listen to it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, really anywhere that you can get audio versions. Uh, it's going to be available. I will also leave the links down below in the details section, in the comment section. I would appreciate your guys' support on the podcast. It's something new that we're doing. A lot of you guys wanted something to listen to when you're at work or driving in the car. So this is just a way to give you guys additional content. And also we're probably gonna be bringing on guests, interviewing people in the two-way world. So let me know down in the comment section what you would be interested in. And again, links to the podcast will be down below in the comment section. So as I mentioned in the intro, the ATF has filed for immediate emergency Supreme Court review of the recent decision which struck down their frames and receivers rule and it struck it down nationwide. The case we will be talking about in this video is called Vanderstock v. Garland. This is a lawsuit which was decided by a Texas federal district court judge, Judge Reed O'Connor. That judge recently ruled that the frames and receivers rule by the ATF is in fact invalid and goes beyond the ATF's authority. Therefore, he granted the plaintiffs their motion for summary judgment and vacated the frames and receivers rule in its entirety. And again, he struck it down nationwide. That was a huge win, but the ATF of course was not going to take that loss. So they decided to appeal that decision up to the fifth circuit. They also sought a stay of the judgment and they requested that the fifth circuit issue that stay. Well, then we received news from the fifth circuit that they did in fact deny the ATF's request to stay that decision. That was huge news, but again, of course, the ATF being who they are, are not going to take that loss. And in my last video, I hypothesized and speculated that based on some of the original filings and kind of reading the tea leaves that I believe the ATF was going to likely go seek emergency Supreme Court intervention in this case. And I was correct. Yesterday, the ATF filed an emergency application to the Supreme Court for the court to essentially stay the lower court's vacature of the frames and receivers rule. What does that mean? Well, essentially the ATF is now crying up to the Supreme Court, asking for the Supreme Court to step in and protect their rule on frames and receivers. Now, interestingly, the ATF also is requesting in the alternative that if the Supreme Court denies granting a stay, then the court should consider the recent filing as a petition for a writ of certiorari before judgment. That means that the ATF wants to bypass all the lower court review, all the lower court proceedings, and instead potentially go directly to the Supreme Court right here and now and have the Supreme Court review and decide on whether or not the frames and receivers ruled by the ATF is in fact valid. The request states that the court should stay the district court's vacature in full. A stay would prevent further irreparable harm to the public while allowing the litigation in this case and other challenges to the rule to proceed in the ordinary course. But given the gravity and urgency of the public safety issues at stake, if the court is not prepared to grant a stay, it may wish to construe this application as a petition for a writ of certiorari before judgment, grant the petition, and set this case for argument this fall. So this is really interesting because the ATF is also pushing for a potential full Supreme Court review of the frames and receivers rule of a full review of this case, and that review would take place almost immediately starting this next fall, starting in November. A writ of certiorari before judgment is an interesting mechanism, which essentially seeks an early Supreme Court review of a case. This type of petition invokes the Supreme Court's statutory power to grant review of a case before the lower court reaches any final judgment. Under Supreme Court Rule 11, the Supreme Court can, any time before judgment, deviate from the normal appellate practice to review matters of such imperative public importance as to justify immediate determination in this court. And that is exactly what the ATF is seeking in this petition. They are seeking for immediate Vanderstock review, immediate review of this case, if the Supreme Court does not grant their emergency stay. It's also funny to see the dramatic shift that the ATF is doing with their legal tactics. Most often, it's the ATF and the government who are the ones who are often arguing for no Supreme Court intervention, no higher court in intervention in these two cases. Instead, the ATF and the government are often the ones who file oppositions, saying that the Supreme Court needs to essentially let the two-way cases work their way down in the lower courts, make their way through the process, get decided by someone like the Fifth Circuit before ultimately stepping in. 
We saw this very thing play out in New York with their CCIA challenges, which sought immediate Supreme Court intervention. Those cases were Antioch and Gonzola. In those cases, the government agencies in the states were opposed to any Supreme Court intervention and argued that it was not needed at all because the appellate courts could review the case, they had expedited the hearings, and that the Supreme Court should give the lower courts a chance to hear those cases. Also recently in the NAGR Illinois assault weapon ban case, the state of Illinois also argued against immediate Supreme Court intervention, saying that the Seventh Circuit needed a chance to review the case and that the Seventh Circuit had expedited review and therefore the Supreme Court should not step in. And in both of those situations, I will note that the Supreme Court agreed and let the lower courts review the case before stepping in. But now that the ATF has lost a case and their stay has been denied, we see the anti-gunners change their tune. Now they are all of a sudden really interested in the Supreme Court stepping in right here and now. And then later in the application, the ATF actually goes on to state that for the foregoing reasons, this court should stay the district court's vacature. If, however, the court denies that relief or grants it only in part, the court may wish to construe this application as a petition for a writ of certiorari before judgment, grant the petition, and set the case for expedited briefing and argument on the questions of whether the rules challenge provisions are consistent with the statutory definition of a firearm. They then state that the government would be prepared to brief this case on a schedule that would allow it to be argued during the November 23rd sitting. And although the Fifth Circuit has scheduled oral argument for September 23rd, it is impossible to know when the court will issue a decision. If, as seems likely, that does not occur until late 2023 or early 2024, this court could not hear the case in the ordinary courts until October's term in 2024, which means that the court may not issue a decision on the merits until June of 2025, nearly two years from now. Particularly, on an urgent public safety issue of national importance, a single district court judge should not be allowed to dictate universal policy for such an extended period absent this Supreme Court's review. So the ATF wants the Supreme Court to grant an emergency stay of the lower court's decision, or in the alternative for the Supreme Court to grant a writ of certiorari before judgment and hear this case in its entirety right here and now during this next term, starting in November. Now, this application was filed to Justice Alito since he is responsible for emergency applications that come out of the Fifth Circuit. Justice Alito is initially responsible for granting, denying, or referring this application to the full court for a vote. I suspect that he will refer the application to a full court vote, um, but if he didn't, and then he denied the ATF's request, then the ATF could go to any of the other justices of the, that they want. They could pick one and also seek the emergency application to be granted. So I suspect that Justice Alito will refer to the full court. And then also there's a question about whether or not he will request a response from the plaintiffs. We've seen recently with Justice Amy Coney Barrett in the Illinois case that she did request a response. So I suspect that Justice Alito will request a response from the plaintiffs. And then we will have the plaintiffs, FBC and some of the individual plaintiffs put forward the response, how they want to respond to the Supreme Court. And it could be an interesting situation where you even have the plaintiffs advocating for immediate Supreme Court intervention, saying, yes, Supreme Court, why don't you go ahead and review this case right here now? Let's resolve this. Let's not pitter-patter around in the lower courts. Go ahead, grant review, grant the writ of certiorari before judgment, and review whether or not the ATF's current rule on frames and receivers is valid or not. So again, things are getting really interesting. Make sure you're staying in tuned. Things are going to be very dynamic. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit the uh, bell, the notification bell. Make sure all notifications are clicked so that you get the information when it's released. But if you like this video and you would like to support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. As always, I want to thank everybody who likes, comments, subscribes, who hits the notification bell, who shares these videos. You guys are directly impacting these videos impacting this channel and helping me to reach and educate more people than I could ever do on my own. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And don't forget this nation was built by arm scholars and this nation will be maintained by arm scholars.